So today we're gonna to look at DC troubleshooting tools under $100. Can you get away with something like this simple test light? Or do you really need a multimeter? And could the cheaper power probes now on the market be the better option? So we'll take a look at each of these and I'll give you my thoughts. So you can get these test lights from Harbor Freight for $6. With the more common one here for six to 12 volt, then we have the 18 to 36, and we have a continuity checker. Now the continuity checker, you do have to provide a battery here for it to work. So we'll consider this power supply as a battery or circuit, and it's providing 12.4 volts. So we have the positive, and then we'll take our test light here and put it on the negative. And of course you see it lights up. But the problem here is we don't know what the voltage is. So we'll dial this down and there we have 10 volts. And yes, the brightness of the light did go down. But can you truly say, yeah, this is 10 volts? And that's 12? And that's one way a test light can lead you down the wrong path. So this basically tells you you have power there at the source but it doesn't tell you the voltage, nor is it going to tell you, of course, the resistance. Green one here is gonna act the same way, but it's for 18 to 36 volts. So with continuity, you know, we have a small piece of wire here. We're just checking to make sure we can get power from one end to the other, and we don't have a power supply. So I don't know if you could tell there, but the light is lit up. But here again, we don't know the voltage, nor do we know the resistance in this wire. So yeah, these are cheap, and they can provide some information but in this day and age, they can also lead you down the wrong path. All right, so I'm gonna cover each of these multimeters here with focusing on DC systems. And I'll give some brief use cases here. So below the screen, we have the select hold, we have the relative button, think of this as a tear button, and we have the backlight illumination. In the center here, we have a turn dial with a bunch of selections we can make. And below that, we have a common port for your black lead. We have two spots for your red lead. We have a 10 amp fused port here. This is gonna be for testing amps. And then on the other side, we have our other red lead port here, which is going to be ohms, resistance, voltage, and also some milliamps. First section on the side here, we have a bunch of ranges, and this is for volts DC. So we have the line with the little slashes there, telling us this is DC. This is one of the biggest drawbacks of this multimeter. You actually need to know what range to be in to make sure you're going to display the value on the multimeter itself. Case in point, we'll plug this multimeter in, and you can see we do not have a reading. We have OL, but we do have a little lightning bolt over here in this corner. Switch it on down to 60, and we can see our 12 volt reading. Now again, below this, this is AC, and we do have no contact voltage testing. Switch that to there. Put the multimeter by AC voltage, detects line voltage here. Now below that, we have two selections here for DC battery checking, so 1.5 volt and 9 volt. Just an auto range here you can select instead of having to go to 60 to read that voltage. If we keep moving, we have amps here. Now this is again DC, so we have the line and the slashes, and 10 being our max there for amp draw. And to do this, you're gonna move the lead over here to the 10 amp spot. Amp testing is a little bit different than, of course, voltage testing. Voltage testing, you're going across negative and positive here to get a voltage. Amperage testing, we have to be in the circuit and we have to have a power source. So I'm gonna use this continuity tester here. So we'll hook the red lead up, and we'll hook the black lead up. And to light this light bulb in here, it's pulling roughly 0.35 amps. Keep moving over here, we have farads. This is for capacity testing. We're gonna skip this. Up next though, we do have the beep test and diode checker. So the beep test here, pretty straightforward. Once you have continuity through your leads to the meter, of course it beeps and gives you a resistance here. If we hit the select button, so then we have diode checker. Now our diode is, think of it as a check valve. It's a one-way street basically. The most common diode that you'll find today is a LED or light emitting diode. And right above that, we do have ohms with multiple ranges again. Pretty straightforward, we are measuring that continuity through our leads. Simple use cases, diagnosing a CAN bus. Here we have a 120 ohm resistor. And if we plug that in here, we're reading 121 ohms. Now if we hit this relative button, hmm, that should actually tear, uh, basically like you're putting a package on a scale 
and it brings it to zero, but here it's not doing anything. So let this cobalt quick. We'll go to ohms. You can see we have 122 ohms there, and if we hit this relative button, we zero out. So apparently either this one's defective or we have a unit here that claims it can do something and it clearly doesn't. So yeah, not a bad little multimeter here for 20 bucks. Comes with the leads, comes with the batteries. But the biggest drawback here is you need to make sure you're in the proper range for what you're testing. Or you need to start high and work your way all the way down to see if you have a reading. So not the best, but you know, it's usable. Cobalt pocket multimeter. Quite interesting here, you can see the size versus a standard multimeter. Both screen we have mode, relative, hold, and then a Hertz button. On the back, this uses a 2032 coin battery, which it does come with. Only two ports on the bottom, so this is only rated to go up to 200 milliamps. Cycle to the left, milliamps, milliamps DC, milliamps AC. Then we have our resistance, diode mode, continuity check. Not the loudest here with the buzzer, along with your capacities checker. Go back across, starts off in AC, so DC voltage, and then we have Hertz, and we'll get more into Hertz here later on. Comes with a little bit on the cheaper side leads here, but overall this Cobalt is a nice little compact unit. No, you really can't do amp draw with it, but for continuity, ohms, and even Hertz here, this might be something to consider, especially with the auto ranging. Next, we have the Ames from Harbor Freight for roughly $42 here. When we look at the Ames here, Ames comes in at roughly $42, also sold by Harbor Freight. A little bit smaller, a lot less going on here with the dial versus the Sentec. So we do have some auto ranging. Top, we have a function hold range button and no contact voltage. Switch the voltage, go to display DC, hit function, we get AC. We do now have a temp sensor, so internally it will give us a temp, and then we can also install a temp sensor here to get a temp reading with a temperature probe. Above that, we have ohms, auto ranging, diode checker, and that continuity test where it'll beep when we have continuity in the leads. Microamps, DC, AC, milliamps, amps. Here they have it highlighted. You need to use the 10 amp port. And then we have those preset ranges here for testing batteries. So 1.5, 9 volts, and 12 volts. Again, so pretty straightforward on the top here. We have that function. We have hold. So holding the value, we can unplug. Still display the value. Click hold again. Hit the range button. We can determine what range we want to actually be in instead of auto. And then we have that no contact voltage testing. Resistance wise, you can see we read OL. And we're reading 0 0.0. Ideally, I'd like to see us read 0.2 there because we do have some resistance in this wiring. If we hook up the CAN bus terminator, we're reading 122 ohms. Then something like a coil on a relay. Seventy one ohms. Comes with this soft case, the probes, and temperature thermal couple. And it does come with a nine volt battery. So not a bad little unit. We do have auto ranging, but you do want to make sure that it's always in auto range. So the Kiwi's probably saying that wrong, but of course off Amazon, this is also $42. Function hold, max min. Then we have backlighting for a display. And this also has a little LED there if you hold it to use as a flashlight. So a little bit more going on here. Now, one thing you'll notice, we'll switch it on. And it lights up here which ports we need to use depending on what we've selected. So it's in DC voltage. You'll notice we do have a range bar at the bottom here as well. So DC volts, AC volts with Hertz. Same thing here for millivolts. We do have a selection for Hertz for frequency and duty cycle. Cover that a little later. Then we have resistance. So OL, connect our lead. You know, we're reading point one there. Hit our function button again. We have our beep test with our resistance. Hit it again, we have diode checker. Then we have capacity. Then we have temp, so it gives us a temp, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And we can install a temp sensor there. Microamps, milliamps, amps. Gonna be the same thing. Starts off in DC, hit the function button, we get AC. 
also with Hertz as well. And then we have that no contact voltage tester for AC. And we're testing that CAN bus terminator reading around 121.6 ohms. And again, that's a 120 ohm resistor. Comes with a thermocouple, decent little set of leads here, along with the batteries for the multimeter. So not bad for 42 bucks. Yeah, there is some range adjustment you have to do, but for the most part, it is auto ranging. And you have Hertz and no contact voltage testing. Now moving up, we have the Craftsman here at $65. Now this did not come with the batteries. A few more features, but it is pretty simple here. Across the top, we have select, max min, and then we have hold. Press hold for two seconds. It does do backlighting on the display. Starting on the left, straightforward. Voltage DC, select it again, voltage AC. Jump up one. We have resistance. You can see we have OL or open line. Connect in. 0.1 ohms. Throw our terminator on here. 120.6 ohms. Hit it again on the select. Diode checker. Hit it again. We have continuity checker with resistance. Above that we have RPM. So here this will actually display engine RPM. Now you're going to have to tie into ignition system. You're going to have to determine how many cylinders the vehicle is and what stroke. Hitting select, you can change cylinders. Holding select changes between four stroke and two stroke up here in the corner. Capacities tester, go back to the other side here. We have dwell. Dwell is another thing. You're gonna have to tell how many cylinders. We're not gonna get into dwell. Dwell is mainly used for ignition, setting points. Past that, we have milliamps. Auto defaults to DC, amps, temp, course it's going to give us a temp and then we can insert the provided thermal couple as well and then Hertz which again we'll get to a little bit later on probes on the other hand seem a little cheesy so probably about the easiest here out of the bunch to use with the auto ranging and it comes with some additional features there with rpm and dwell all right so power probe wise here we're moving up to around 86 bucks msrp for this handsel so you've got this nice little case, has this little foam insert on top, battery connection lead, cigarette lighter plug, additional extension, and a second probe lead if you lose the one on the tool. So on the tool itself, you get a little bit of lead there. You have a supplied ground, so wherever you're actually using the tool, you can supply a ground if needed. Selector button, rocker switch, and then of course where the probe or your lead is gonna connect, and we have LEDs there as well. Probe is stored here on the back. So we'll plug in our battery connection and we'll give this guy 12 volts. So here we show volts. We're gonna skip that for a second. Volts AC, ohms. So we got our resistor. We're gonna connect in line. And we're reading 120 ohms. We'll take this off, direct connect. We do have a beep for continuity, but we don't display an ohms reading. We'll go ahead and connect this relay. So we have 71 ohms. Keep moving to the right, we have diode checker. And if we cycle back to voltage, and if we touch the hot on our power supply, we see we have roughly 12 volts. But what's cool about this is, yeah, we have to provide power and ground, but then we can even bench test something like a trailer light. So here I'm connected in with these probes to the harness. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the ground here, and we're gonna plug this other lead here on top. And if I push the rocker forward, you can see we light the light up. If we need to provide a ground, of course we would go in the other direction, push the rocker down, providing a ground. So in my opinion, yeah, pretty handy for what it is, especially if you're needing to provide power, say to a trailer light or a ground, this could make the job a lot easier to diagnose. So at the top end, we have the top diag here, power probe, has this soft case, has that battery supply, does have these covers on here. You can remove them if you want. Probe extension cable out the end, USB-A to USB-A software update cable. Extension cable, so you have a large and a small probe. The small probe is actually flat spotted there. So if you had flat style pin connectors, same type of deal here. Go ahead and provide power. A Little bit shorter cord there. Again, you can use that extension. It does have that additional ground. 
First up, we have multimeter. Hit OK. Plug this in. Give us our voltage, max min voltage. Below that, we have resistance. We'll use our ground here. And you can see we're displaying zero ohms. Unplug it, we do have open wire. Put this 120 ohm resistor on here, 121. So we'll click down one more. We have diode checker along with our continuity beep test. Zero to five volts. So here we can actually output a voltage from zero to five out the tip. Right now it's set at 2.5 and you can adjust that voltage over here. We'll cover this more in detail a little bit. Hertz, also something we can cover in a little bit. That's gonna give you your frequency and your duty. Same thing for the oscilloscope. Then below that we have active. So active is pretty much what it stands for here. We have our voltage out. We have our voltage to our tool. We have our amp draw, how we're powering out, and then the max amps here. Now this has an internal breaker up to 18 amps, and you can set that from one to 18 in single digits. So we're gonna go ahead and start here with set. So if I push the up button, our light comes on, I let go, light goes off. We can do the same with ground as well. So we move forward here, we have moment. So if I hit that button once, it automatically keeps the power on. So we'll shut that off, go over again. We have pulse, click the button up. And we're pulsing the light now. One more over, here's where we can set those amps. So we can drop that all the way down. And if this actually drew over one amp, we would trip the internal breaker. Right, so we have a light bulb here to get more amp draw. We turn it on. You can see we have three amps there and we're set to four amps max. So we go over, set that to two amps, scroll back. And now if we turn our light on. Over current protection and it tripped the internal breaker. Escape back out, set up. So you can turn the sound off, language, firmware, and actual about the tool. Now Hertz is how often the pump is cycled in one second. Well as duty cycle is how long the pump is ran compared to how long it's off. So I'll go ahead and run this pump. Now you'll notice that the frequency and the duty cycle on this is kind of all over the place. I do like the oscilloscope there. You can see what's going on, but these numbers are bouncing around quite a bit. So out of all these ones here, the best one I found for Hertz is gonna be this Kiwi's. So we'll go ahead and run that pump. you can see how consistent the Hertz and the duty cycle there was on this multimeter. So one of the neat features of this top die is we can output zero to five volts signal voltage. So in this case, I have a urea sensor. I'm tapped into the signal line back to the controller. On my computer screen, I have urea pressure, consumption, and temperature. You can see we're at zero bar for pressure. I'm gonna go ahead Crank this up here. And you can see our pressure start to climb. So pretty cool, you could go ahead and send voltage from this. And it also gives me here the actual voltage on that signal line right now. Which, 0.4, that's enough to tell the controller, hey, this sensor is connected. All right, so we've seen some interesting results. So what's my takeaway? If I come out to help you diagnose a machine, and you pull these out, we're gonna to have to have a little discussion. The aims did all right, but I think you have better features for this price point with the others. Craftsman, yeah, a lot of features, but it's on the expensive side. Again, don't care for those cheesy leads. Sentec, but yeah, decent for 20 bucks. Cobalt pocket multimeter. You're not always looking for amperage. This would be something good for just checking voltage, 
resistance. It's definitely packs quite a bit for this compact size and 32 bucks. Overall though, I'm gonna give it to the Kiwis here. Yeah, same price as the Ames, packs some more features, bigger screen than the rest, range bar at the bottom, tells you exactly where you need to be, depending on what you're trying to do. So the Power Pro, the Ansel come in here on the cheaper side of things, but if you're looking again, something for power for ground yeah something to consider could come in handy especially doing trailer lights top bag so 100 bucks there i don't think you can go wrong the oscilloscope does work and you can provide voltage and ground and you can adjust the amount of amps before it actually trips the breaker internally which is pretty cool there as well and it's up to 18 amps higher than the meters but it's hard to beat the features you get out of this and i really like that you can send zero to five volts there out of it now some of you might be wondering what i've used for the past 15 years and that's been this fluke well it's a mac but it's a fluke multimeter so in reality it pretty much does everything that's needed because we're covering DC volts and we're covering ohms and we're covering amps there up to 10. So I tried to keep this straight to the point. Of course, basically just covering a little bit of volts, DC, ohms, hertz. But if you're looking to really go in depth, I would recommend this John Deere book, which goes in great detail. And for something that's roughly an inch thick there. So you can pick this up on eBay for like 25 bucks or you can order it from Deer. This is the eighth generation of this book. There is a 10th generation now. I think it's like 52 bucks from Deer, but again, you're getting quite a book. And again, these would primarily be used to diagnose DC systems. But with that, if you're looking for more details on multimeters, I would recommend checking out YouTube channel Three Phase. He's been a subscriber of this channel since all the way back. Does some really good content on multimeters and electrical test equipment. So if you're looking for something on the upper end, that would be the channel to check out. Specs will be at the end here like normal. Product links will be below like normal. Let us know if you have any of these and how they've worked for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.